face the Ridge. You know, this is where Sammy hit number 500. But in the first inning, he gets ready for his first at bat, and they've got no love for Sammy this time around at Great American Ballpark. But in his first trip, Sammy, base hit. Not only that, a broken bat base hit. No, they didn't check the bat. Sosa all smiles. Hangs 10 hits, four runs and five and two thirds. Fifth inning, Sosa's third at bat, and that one's gone. His seventh of the season, but his first since May 1st. Reds fans digging it. Sammy's homer, 464 feet and left a dent. Buck Martinez, what's up? Well, the Cubs needed a boost in offense, and they certainly got that with the return of Sammy Sosa. Sosa's long home run off Jimmy Haynes came on a breaking pitch. He got curveballs all night long, and he didn't miss this one as he hit it well over 450 feet to center. Meanwhile, Kerry Wood rolling. Perfect through four innings. Bottom five, Austin Kearns up. He grounds out to Mark Vigilante. Kearns 0 for 3. Same inning. Wood gets Adam Dunn looking. Dunn 0 for 3. 2 Ks. Wood complete game. 9 Ks. Just one earned run. Good game, Kerry. We were done and just, just establish a fastball and then see what else came after that. And, uh, you know, they came out swinging early and, and uh, yeah. made pitches early in the count that they were swinging at and, and got some ground balls and, and got some, uh, some early outs and didn't have to a lot of pitches. Ninth inning now. Bottom nine to be exact. Barry Larkin out. Sammy, give me some gloves. Two for four with a home run, two RBIs, and a Sports Center top ten nominee as the Cubs win it four to one. That's a complete highlight. Giants and Dodgers at Chavez Ravine. Kaz Sheehy in L.A. got a lot going for him in this win. Great. What do they have going for them? Well, they've won seven straight. Paul LaDuca has got a 24-game hit streak. Kaz Sheehy 3-0 and at home. And then there's Gagne. He has automatic when he gets into a game. So let's see how it played out. Top three, one nothing Giants. Ishihi to Ray Durham. Durham hits it hard to third. Adrian Beltre says, not on my watch. Strong throw gets him. I got an owie. He's OK. Next batter is Barry Bonds. Let's go through a pitch sequence. Curveball up high. Bad swing at the high cheese. Show me the bender. All right, that works so well. Show it to me one more time. Struck him out. Three strikeouts for Kaz Bonds, one for three. Bottom four, one nothing Giants. Base is loaded for Alex Cora. He has on his resume professional base unloader. Two runs will score. Dodgers go up two to one. Now the other situation, Paul LaDuca and his 24-game hitting streak. Up in the six, he's over three in the night. Three up in count. Fourth pitch to strike. Fifth pitch, he fouls off. Next pitch, he fouls off. You know, right now he's saying, my patience is infinite, my tenacity is everlasting. So is this at bat. Eventually, LaDuca finds one he likes into the gap in right center. Two runs score on the double. LaDuca's hit streak at 25. Dodgers move into a tie with the Giants for first. They win at 8-2. to two. LaDuca, the first Dodger to put together a 25-game hit streak since Steve Sachs back in 1986. In fact, it's tied for the second longest hit streak by a Dodger player in the last 50 years. Only Willie Davis's franchise record 31 game run has gone longer. Second 10 game winner. Chacon pitched well. Top 30 gets Donaldo Mendez swinging. Top five, Xavier Nady swinging. Chacon six and two thirds, 200 runs, four Ks. Bottom five, one nothing Rockies. Juan Uribe up. Base hit. Brent Butler coming around. Third base coach Sandy Alomar says, whoa, slow your roll there, Brent. But he doesn't listen. It's a good thing he scored. Alomar like, dude, what's up with that? Rockies win at 5-3. I'd like to believe my players need me. And it, to, to me, I have a job to do. You know, whether you, uh, whether you like your owner or don't like your owner, uh, do you that, like him? Well, at, at times I think he's okay. Uh, but you I like him more or less this year. Well, I like that he gave me the opportunity to do this. You know, that, that's it. You know, you can't pick and choose the part of your boss that you want to keep. And you know, at times I'm sure George Steinbrenner thinks Joe Torre is okay. Those times being 96, 98, 99, and 2000 World Series winning seasons. Other than that, with the madness of King George, everything is fair game. And yes, the Yankees are in first again, but keep in mind, in the 30 years that the boss has been the boss of the Bronx, Torrey's 1,201 games managed more than double the man who is second on that list. In other words, 
George is due to let somebody go soon. Raja making his first win since first starts in 2300. Ben Grieve, top second scoreless. A shot to short. Vegeta, you're awesome! Spin for the out. Grieve was 0 for 5 on the night. That would be a recurring theme in this highlight, trust me. Bottom second, still scoreless for Victor Zombrano. Jorge Posada! Oh, but Al Martin, a top 10 nominee with the great catch. Jorge also 0 for 5. Top 6, Clemens to Javier Valentin. Go away. He was 0 for 2. Then Julio Lugo. He was just Lugo. He was 0 for 4. And then Ben Grieve again. I told you he was 0 for 5. So we're in the seventh. Clemens still hitless. Keep in mind, he has never thrown a no-no. He gets a little excitement, a little pumpage from Coach Stottlemyre on the bench. Top 8 was still hitless. Roger to Marlon Anderson. Don't! Stupid Marlon Anderson, they're saying in the Bronx. Single to left. Breaks up the no-no. Clemens, though, trying to focus. Get through the rest of the inning. Remember, there's no score. Same inning, two on. Carl Crawford. Please. 0 for 1, one strikeout. Next batter, Lugo. He went 0 for 4 with four strikeouts. The Yankees give Roger a well deserved handshake. Eight innings, one hit, nine strikeouts. We went to the bottom of the 12th when Alfonso Soriano was just 1 for 6, but the 1 was a really good one. The only hit, of, the only run of the game. Yankees win it 1 0. Roger, how about that effort? Once I gave up the first hit, uh, you know, I just did, had to get a little stingy there. I didn't want the game to go by because you figured that's what was going to happen, and it ended up being the case. We had to go extra innings to win it, but that was the case. The Yankees have taken six of seven since being no hit by... It would help that he pitched to Bill Miller. Looking at strike three, he was over four, and then Doug Mirabelli struck out. He was over three. Loiza eight innings, six Ks. Bottom fifth, two runners on for Miguel Olivo. He singles to left. Joe Creedy will score. Jose Valentin thinks he's scoring, but Nomar says, I don't think so. Nomar guns him out at the plate. Mia Ham's happy. Game tied at one. Bottom six, it's Brian Daubach at the plate. And Daubach doubles to right field. On the play, D'Angelo Jimenez comes in to score. White Sox go up two to one. Top nine now. Red Sox trail three to one. Two runners on, two out. Billy Koch to trot. Advantage Koch. His ninth save. Louisa's tenth win. White Sox win it three to one. Won three games in a row coming in. Reed's last outing. Another May 31st. One, two, three, Bottom first. Facing Mike Sweeney. Sweeney strikes out swinging and loses his bat. He would leave the game in the bottom third with upper back tightness. Top nine. Eight six Royals. One out. Corey Koski on first. Mike McDougal pitching to Torrey Hunter. Three Royals converge on this one. Desi Relford with the catch. He turns and throws the first, but he ouch, he hits Koski in the back. Raul Labanez runs into Hunter while going for the ball. Royals try to mess this up. Next batter, Doug Minkavich. But McDougal gets him to fly out. 15 save for McDougal. So the Royals win at 8-6. Now they're one game behind the Twins for first in the AL Central. They'll go for the sweet Thursday. You know, Sports Center has the cards and brewers at Miller Park. London Rush trying to avoid losing his 10th straight game. Top first, second batter of the game, Glendon Rush to Eduardo Perez. Perez was three for six, including the single. That might be some foreshadowing how Glendon's night went. And then Albert Pujols is fat with a PH. Fat Albert singles to second there. Four for five, he's now hitting a major league best 386. Net batter Edgar Renteria saws that one off into right, scoring Perez. He was two for five. Edgar now hitting 347. We're still in the first. It's 2-0. Orlando Palmero. He was two for three. Two more runs come in. It's 4-0. Did I mention we're in the first? Now in the second. It's no better. Oh. That's not going away. 440 feet to left. The two-run homer cards win it. 9-1. And here's the D-backs and Astros. Brandon Webb, 2.45 ERA, second among rookies, going against journeyman Ron Vallone, making his first start of the season. Bottom second, Jeff Kent says, hello, Mr. Webb. Number 11 on the year for Kent, his only hit of the ball game. He's batting 313 for the season, 1 0 Astros. That run will hold up until the ninth. Top nine, Billy Wagner in to close it out. Probably had other things on his mind. His wife, Sarah, gave birth to a daughter, Olivia, on Wednesday. Astros 32 and 1 when leading after eight innings, and when you know it, Luis Gonzalez up and out the other way. Solo shot is 14th of the year. He's three for four. Wagner's second blown save of the season. He had converted 16 straight. Still top nine, Rob Hammock on, facing Quentin McCracken. And with a name like McCracken, and he's got to be good. Richard Hidalgo comes up throwing. Play at the plate. Hammock in there. Take another look at it. Brad Osmus traps the ball. Hammock underneath the tag, and the D-backs win it 2-1. to one. Both starting pitchers pretty well. Webb, six innings, three hits. Valone, six and third, and five hits.
He says, fellas, what do you have for me? He's going to pinch hit Jason Kendall. That's a brilliant managerial decision. The Rocky Biddle pitch into the gap in left center. Two runs come in. Pirates win it four to three. They win their first series at home. Mariners from Seattle bottom second. Aaron Seeley facing Randy Wynn. Brad Fulmer says, you know, I'd like to be a sports center top ten plays nominee tonight. Top third, Freddy Garcia facing Jose Molina. Carlos Guillen, he's got glove too. And he throws out Molina. Later in the third, Garcia facing David Eckstein. He tries to bunt with Mark McLemore. Also a sports center top ten plays nominee. Bottom six, Ben Weber facing Mike Cameron with two on. Oh, nobody's going to get that one. Down the line, Edgar Martinez coming around to score. Mariners go up 1 0. Top seven, Garcia facing Benji Molina. Bases loaded, but Molina hits the 1 2 3 DP. Garcia, eight innings of work, five hits, three walks, three Ks, and the Mariners win it 2 zip. Rangers and Athletics, Berezito starting for the A's. Hey, what do you say we flash back to the last time he lost to Texas? Well, okay. We see, we can't do that. It's never <laughs> happened. Zito 9 0 against the Rangers, 2.57 area and 13 career starts. Top six, 1 0 A's. Barry Zito walks A rod. That's very un Zito like. Three batters later, Mark Teixeira. He just doinked him on the right wrist. Next batter, base is loaded. Zito does not walk. Doug Glanville will score that little bench, Kevin. We're tied at one. Barry, a spot cross, a tad miffed, a bit irked, a little peeved even. Top seven, one man on, Alex Rodriguez. Oh, in the full upright and locked position. His 17th, it's 3-1 Rangers. The A's battle back to tie it at three, and we move on to the 11th. Two men on, Scott Hatterberg off R.A. Dickey. Oh, Hatterberg, me happy. Chris Singleton comes in to score. The A's win 4-3. Zito still hasn't lost to the Rangers. Tuesday's hero for New York. After a bunt single by Juan Pierre, Al Leiter facing Luis Castillo. There it is. Second hit for the Marlins, so no one hitter for Leiter. Gave him six hits and five runs and five innings. Now top second after a single by Jeremy Burnett. Brad Penny facing Vance Wilson. So neither team will get a one hitter in this one. Ten hits, eight runs for Penny. Marlins with a three nothing lead. Still top second, two on Penny facing Roger Sedania with the Mets down three two. That's going to be trouble. Jason Phillips, Jose Reyes coming around. Mets take the lead 43, and they win it 10 to 5. Braves and Phillies at the vet. Kevin Millwood going against his old team for the first time. Admitted it was a little strange. First inning, he retired the first two batters, and then he faced Gary Sheffield. He did not retire him. Singles to right. Sheff, two for four, two RBI. Next batter, Chip Jones. He did not retire him. Singles off the middle, he was two for five. Then Andrew Jones, free pass. Okay, we have walk. The base is loaded, and Robert Fix says, thank you. Singles down the line to score Sheff and Chipper. Braves up to nothing. Top of the third, same score. Millwood to Sheffield. I can't get this guy out. Sheffield walks. Now, Sheff on first. Now, watch Kevin Millwood because he's not watching Gary Sheffield. In fact, this 11th steal of the season so clean, Mike Lieberthal doesn't even throw. So, Fick batting with Sheffield on second. And show me Robert Fick being productive. Sheffield will score. Braves go up 3-0. Fick, 2 for 4, 3 RBI. Millwood, 5 innings, 8 hits, 4 runs, 3 walks. Top 6, Braves up 4-0. Sheffield to Carlos Silva. Advantage, Sheffield. 19th home run of the season. 3 runs. Braves win it 6-1. They're an NL best 46 and 23. Baltimore Jays and Orioles. Who's the top gun of the Toronto staff? It's gotta be Roy Halladay. Codename Blue Jay. Mission. Nine straight victories. That was coming in. His objective defeat the Orioles for number 10. It's go time, boys. Bottom first, runner on first. Halliday facing Melvin Mora. And he gets Mora swinging, but Tom Wilson throws the ball away. The pick off at second. Brian Roberts goes to third. So Halliday's lost that loving feeling. Next batter, David Segui. Swinging. Orioles crash and burn. They never get Roberts home. Sixth inning, Halliday gets Mora swinging. He was one for four, three Ks. Two L's in Halliday, boys. Next batter, Halliday with a need for speed. He gets Segui swinging. Segui 0 for four. Bottom seven, two out runners on first and second for Aronimo Hill. Chris Woodward making the play. Halliday, seven innings at work, two earned runs, five strikeouts. Jays win it 6 2, so mission accomplished for Halliday. Rob Dibble, breaking. Tigers. Tribe's third baseman Casey Blake, his real name is William, like the famous romantic poet William Blake. He was a famous poet, an artist, an engraver. He wrote the classic poem, The Tiger. I was just reading that the other day. You know, the opening stanza of that poem was, Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night. That's what immortal what you're hand or eye, don't stop me, could frame thy fearful symmetry. So we sort of reworked this poem for Alan Trammell and his tigers. Tigers, tigers lacking might. Demetri Young, doy, struck out in the third. 
But pitching well on that night, Jeremy Bonderman strikes out Blake in the fifth. That's William Blake. Goes by Casey. Broussard a hit to third heat Aspire, then setting the table in the seventh. But Bonderman in trouble as he began to tire. An RBI for Blake did smile his work to see. Casey's hit makes it 2 nothing Indians. Tigers bat again as Cleveland wins by three. Bonderman a spot cross. Indians win 4-1. to one.